John, verse 34, it says that if you fear uh, some kind of disobedience from your wives, it says if you fear. That's not what it means. That's not what it means in, in Arabic. All of the Mufassirun are in agreement that it means if a woman has entered into a state of gross disobedience, and this doesn't mean disobedience to her husband, disobedience to God, then the husband is told first to do wa'ad, wa'iduhunna, to, to admonish them, to tell them, please, don't do this. And then it says, wa'hjuruhunna fin madaja'. And then it says that leave them in the beds. Don't have intimacy with them. Now the third in that verse says, wa'dribuhunna. It uses a word darb in the Arabic language. Now, unfortunately, the Arabs, most Arabs, because I spend a lot, lot of time in the Arabic world, most Arabs do not know Quranic Arabic. They know their own, whatever they speak, Ammiya, Darija. Most do not know Quranic Arabic. Words in Arabic have many, many meanings. The word darb in Arabic has several meanings. For instance, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Faragha alayhim about Ibrahim He went to the idols and struck them with his right hand. That's what it says. The Quran also says, They strike the earth. In other words, they travel. The Quran says, They suffered humiliation and impoverishment. It doesn't mean that humiliation and poverty started beating them up. But they were knocked down by it. So it's used metaphorically. The Quran says that the angels The hypocrites. They get their faces. They smite their faces and their backs. But it also says God strikes a similitude. It's used as a metaphor. So in Arabic, this word can mean many, many different things. So what does it mean in the verse? Well, first of all, you have to understand the verse, according to Ibn Ashur, was actually designed to eliminate domestic violence. And that is why the great irony is it's used to justify domestic violence. Because nobody and anybody that tells you violence against your own spouse is justifiable in Islam is not only a liar, but is ab he's absolutely disparaging the messenger of Allah who was sent as a mercy to all the world and certainly a mercy to women. So to say that this means that you can beat your wife, that you can be violent in your own home, a place where she should feel safer than any other place, how could that have anything to do with ma arsalnaka illa rahmatin lil alameen? We only sent you as a mercy to all the world. How can that have anything to do with a man about whom his companion said, the messenger of Allah never struck a woman, a child, or a servant, ever. And you have in the messenger of Allah the best example. You have in the messenger of Allah the best example. So what does that verse mean? First of all, the ulama say the wow there, which normally does not, benefits the tartib. In other words, that it actually means you do this, then you do this, then you do this. First of all, I guarantee you, nobody has ever hit their wife working out some progressive thing. Well, first I'll try this, and then I'll try this, and then I'll try this. That's not how domestic violence occurs. Domestic violence occurs when somebody loses his temper and punches somebody. That's domestic violence. So the first thing the Quran is telling you, stop and think about this. That will stop domestic violence. Now, in that verse, according to Ata, one of the greatest mufassirun of the Quran, he said it doesn't mean hit, he said it means get angry. In other words, once you've gone through this, then you should let her know this is serious. Because the nushuz, according to the commentators, nishazat means irtafa'at, to rise up against. It means to get arrogant with. So if a wife is becoming arrogant with a husband, or vice versa, because the Quran says that a husband can become arrogant with the wife. It goes both ways. If the wife becomes arrogant with the husband, then the husband is told 
do this, then this, then this. According to Atta, he said that that third one was then you have to let her know. But what does it say immediately after that? It says that if you fear shiqaq baynihima, right? If you fear separation, who's the you? The people that are responsible. فَبْعَثُ حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا Bring an arbitrator from her side, an arbitrator from his side, and let them work this out. And then Allah says, وَإِنْ يُرِدَا إِصْلَاحًا يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا And if the two sides want to rectify, God will give them tawfiq. God will give them providential care, will help them rectify. But if one side doesn't, separate them. Separate them. Let them go. The Quran says, "Imsakun bi ma'ruf, aw tusriyhu bi ihsan." Hold on to them in a good way, or let them go in a good way. But don't leave them muallaqa suspended. This is a major problem, not just in our community, in all these communities. If you read the statistics about domestic violence, it's deeply depressing. Now, most of you in in here, and I'm assuming the ladies also probably have very nice marital relationships. That's the way my household has been. My wife and I don't fight. We've been married 22 years. We've nev she's never struck me. I've never struck her. Never, not once. It does, that doesn't have to be the way things are. But if people are in a situation where they can't get along, they have to let go. This is Islam. Islam is a mercy. We've got all these people out there just really suffering like they're in hell. And some people making religion a hell for the women. Wallahi, we have imams on the minbars preaching this stuff. I've heard pre preachers say, Wallahi, I've heard people say, oh, there's some women, the only thing that benefits is striking. First of all, it's makru to even do the tap. But the Prophet ﷺ said, Darban ghayra mubarrih. Why doesn't anybody ever translate that word or explain what people mean? They say it means tabriyah is to do harm, to be violent, or to do it out of anger. That's what it means. So even to do that, like to a child, just like a slap, that's a darb. In, in, in Arabic, when you do tayammum, it's called darba, darba al ula wa darba al thaniya, right? This is what they teach in the books of fiqh. You tap the earth like this. That's a darba. But to say that you can strike a woman physically and harm her, leave some trace on her, a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. That's not Islam, it's jahiliya. It's jahiliya. And there's people that do these things. And these poor women have to suffer the humiliation. Ibn Ashur in his tafsir says, and I believe this, he says it is absolutely acceptable for the authorities in charge to prescribe a punishment, to prescribe a punishment for any act of domestic violence. And he says when men are no longer vigilant about controlling themselves, when he said when they use this verse as a means to express their anger, their rage, and their vengeance on a woman, then he says it's the time for the authorities to come in. And that's why any woman who's suffering domestic abuse has every right to go to the proper authorities. If the Muslims won't help her, then she can go to the police or anybody else. Because nobody, nobody walking on two feet, not even an animal on four feet or crawling on the earth, should ever be humiliated should ever be tortured, should ever be struck violently. This is a major problem in our community. We need to think deeply. Al-Mu'minun, ba'duhumu, al-Mu'minun wa al-Mu'minat, ba'duhumu awliya'u ba'd. The believing men and women protect one another. Protect one another. That's what wilaya is. You protect each other. That's the believing men and believing women.